I conducted some research that explored the strengths and weaknesses of online porn to our society. As online porn is quite a broad topic in relation to new media, I decided to somewhat specify some of my research to its implications on the female and male genders. Let's see what I found, hey? Professor Susanna Personen states that porn sites offer endless subcategories of special preferences as simultaneously for micro markets and increase their visibility of fetishes and kinks that were more previously deemed subcultural or highly marginal. This idea can be furthered by Professor Fiona Atwood. In her book Porn Studies from Social Problem to Cultural Practice, she argues that online porn is the brave new frontier for sexual expression and a means of liberation. In this sense, we can view online porn through digital media as an eternal platform and setting for sexuality and sexual identity to blossom. Through actual participation in porn, men and women have a plethora of sexual choice and experiment, and new media will allow this to grow even more. The digitization of online porn has also broken the boundaries of the perfect female and male sex symbol, as sites now frequently show men and women of all shapes and ages. Most sites have the mature and MILF popular categories. Thousands of sites are further dedicated to homosexuals and digital media continues to make this a sexual norm. However, the growth of porn in the online setting continues to exploit and degrade women, promoting it as an accepted culture. Through viewing multiple sites in my research, popular categories can involve cum shots on the woman with titles of videos involving insults such as whore and skank. This is similar to the findings of Wazkul, who states that the primary attraction of porn to men is to watch sluts, whores and nymphos and girls who take throbbing cocks. Through such common language across sites, it is clear that these sites are designed to be seen by the dominating man. As no men are mentioned in categories or titles, apart from them fucking or owning. Also noteworthy is the fact that men almost always remain anonymous while the woman is fully exposed. In her article, Sex in America Online, Julie Albright conducts a sex and relationship survey, discovering that men and lesbians access online porn the most. Perhaps this finding reinforces the idea of women being the object in porn. Albright also found that most women experience body image issues after watching porn, increased pressure to perform acts seen in porn and being criticised by their partners. Albright's findings pose worrying implications for users and real-life sexual encounters and relationships. Furthering this concern, writer Gary Wilson believes that the more dependent users become, especially heterosexual men, the more sexual expectation and less satisfaction will be experienced with their women. I wanted to speak to my friend and online porn user, Brett, to discover his relationship between online porn and real life experience. Let's see what he had to say. Porn stars have absolutely massive fake tits that are, are perfect. I think that set an expectation that all girls were going to be like that, which is obviously not true. And also conveys the message that every girl is always wanting to have sex and sex is very easy to come across and like the promiscuity of it like three sims and all that sort of stuff is conveyed through porn as being completely normal where in real life that just doesn't happen. Brett also mentioned that online porn can sometimes make him feel inadequate in terms of genital aesthetics and performance. Writer Harry Broad furthers this idea in that he expresses his concerns about what porn conceives as normal sexuality in men. While moral panic exists regarding the effects of growing porn sites on women, women are merely always seen as the only victim, but we need not neglect its implications for men. In this week's episode of Exploring New Media, User Settings and Applications, I have discussed the positive and negative consequences of digital media's creation of online pornography. Moral panic will continue to surround the issue, however due to the digital nature of online porn it will continue to exist and grow. 
Through acknowledging this, I give some final advice. To minimise the discussed negatives, we should see online porn as a setting where a user's fantasy meets a virtual reality and to an extent not to be intertwined with actual reality. So my fellow watchers, enjoy with care and consideration, but don't expect me to jump on my bed and rip out a perfect pair of double Ds because it's not going to happen. I'll see you next week.